still so hot in this office, so if we start sweating profusely, <laughs> we apologize in advance. Um, there's so much to talk about today, right? So much. There is. We're sorry, we're just catching up on lag as well. We're seeing, uh, waiting for the stream to actually start for everyone. This is always fun to be behind. <laughs> but yeah, so everyone, I'm sure if you're here, you have seen The Rings of Power have released their, I don't know, 500th trailer so far for the show. And it surely is the last one too. Yeah, they I can't assume so. possibly get another one in. So yeah, it's, uh, well, let's have a little look, see what happened. And this time we thought we'd do live and have a chat about it rather than doing a breakdown video. Yes, as if you've if you've been a follower of this channel for a while, you know we love these live streams. It's just hard to fit them in yes. around our jobs. Uh, we'll kind of go back and forth between reading the comments, talking to you guys, and also, I guess, kind of giving our thoughts on the new trailer, mm -hmm. uh, amongst other bits of Middle Earth news too. Yes, let's have a look at some uh, some comments. Lady Rousseline, hello, hello, hello. Uh, Range of the North, what's up? Glad to see you here. Uh, Juan? Yuan? Juan. Usually Juan. So we're pretty famous for um, butchering some comments in these live streams. Uh, some, some names, rather. <laughs> John, what's up, dude? How's it going? Uh, okay, there's quite a few people in here, so... All right, let's just start talking about this trailer, shall we? Okay, I think there's one big thing to address to start with. The music. Yeah. Did, would you like me to start? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to start by saying it was a really cool song. I really, really liked the song. But I really, really, really did not like it for a Middle Earth Sorry. trailer. I got like, a bit of Jim Carrey there. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I mean, whose decision was it to put music like that with, <sighs> with a Middle Earth? A Tolkien yeah. piece of work. I mean... We had a quick glance through the comments on the actual mm. trailer, right? And and someone said, like, uh, about the music and said yeah. something on the lines of, imagine Peter Jackson's trailers were kept to, like, lose yourself. Like, it's it's not quite that extreme, but I get what they're saying. It just doesn't work. No, it's such a poor fit. And, I mean, we may as well also address the fact that the new Game of Thrones House of the Dragon show has just mm. started coming out. And that's been very positively received. So for Amazon now to probably purposely put out a trailer just after mm. that first episode to kind of try and bring the hype back, I feel like they might have made a mistake. I mean, everyone was excited. The hype was building. I didn't think they needed another trailer. Mm. Like, yes, okay, there's some cool shots in this one that we will get to in a minute. But I, oh, I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, I've seen a few comments talking about the writing and the dialogue sounds really cringy and it sounds super generic. And I absolutely understand that. But on the flip side, I'd also suggest that they're probably picking dialogues from dramatic scenes. And when taken out of context, it does come across very generic. And Yeah, that's the issue with all trailers, really, is nothing makes a lot of sense. Mm. And technically, if it does make sense, then people end up complaining that you have trailers that just show you the whole what, film or series. Yeah. So, yes, <laughs> taken out of context, it does seem quite jarring and... Not worthy of the most expensive show ever made. Yeah. But until we've, and like, it's like with most of the stuff we've seen so far, until there's context to it, it's hard to fully understand how to the good side or to the bad side it wants to go. Yeah. There's a comment here from Armadillo Pants 92. Mm -hmm. um, the trailer still explains nothing about what the show is about. Like, I literally have no clue what the show is going to be about based on the trailers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This has been a big thing with the whole marketing for the show that Amazon have missed the mark with um and that's if they they haven't known whether they're selling themselves to massive talking fans who already know the backstory mm. or to bring a whole new fan base on board who know nothing about it so they've kind of hinted stuff that fans will already know about and they'll be like oh that's gonna be great to see oh, that's gonna be awesome but also not enough to really show where they have changed stuff and understand how it's going to work so yeah it's another example of amazon's marketing just being off the pace yeah um, so Catherine put the music feels like a CW show. You hit the nail on the head right there. Yes, it really did feel yes. like a CW show. Um, wait, wait for the fan cuts now. Yeah, new trailers, yeah. if it was. <laughs> Laura Elstad, how's it going? Greetings, fellas. How are we this fine day? We are good. Um, obviously, this uh, the, 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 the day has been a roller coaster so far with the trailer coming mm. up. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm okay. Um, what's up, Sword? What up, Prince? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Help. Okay, there's, there's one here from oh, Juan. Yeah. I, I'm sorry if I'm saying yeah. that wrong. It was the last chance to win some people over. It felt like an Amazon ad. Do you know why? It was an Amazon ad. That's why. <laughs> yeah, it's... Amazon like to um, toot their own horn a bit with all of this. Mm. And uh, just... They need the show. Uh, yeah. They've done... They didn't give us anything for ages. And then they tried to give us a year's worth of stuff in a couple of months. Yeah. Um, and now it's just a case of just give us the show. Mm. You, you're only doing more damage by putting more stuff out without really giving us anything new. Because mm. yes, there are a couple of new things in this trailer, but not really anything yeah. um, that we haven't seen before in some way. So it's oversaturating it. Yeah. Um, Pilot said, don't get your hopes up for the trailer. Um, well, we've already seen it. We've seen it mm. before we went live. So this is just our straight away, fresh off watching it, our, our thoughts and reactions. Yes. Um, our hopes are not up, don't you worry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Although, there's a point I want to agree with here by Thomas. I was totally won over by the dwarf elevator. Mm. Now, I kind of agree with that in a way. Yes, okay, it might be a bit weird. But one of the things I've been most excited to see in the entire show is Kaza Doom. And yeah. the dwarves in general, really. Mm -hmm. And the dwarven theme from the music track they've released was epic. And every shot we've seen inside Kaza Doom looks epic to me so far I as agree. well. I agree, I agree. And for me, that's a big thing. For like, If Kaza Doom wasn't epic and mm. this mighty hall like it should be, that's one big hurdle that they would have tripped up on. So the fact they've done that quite well and the fact that Owen Arthur is playing Prince Joan, which Prince Joan and other German life, that's a whole different issue. But the fact that Owen Arthur's playing uh, Prince Joan, I'd love that casting and he's Welsh. Mm. So love seeing a Welsh person there. Yeah. Um, so many comments coming in that we'll try and uh, keep up with. So... Revan said, I don't want to hate it, but I do. I know exactly how you mm. feel. I have this really painful internal struggle going on with the show, and I have since we first saw stuff. I want to like... <sighs> of course, I get a phone call now. I want to like this show more than anything. Of course. It's mm. a really expensive TV show. I'm just going to put this on silent. About my favourite subject in the world, right? Mm. Um, of course, I want to love it. But things are coming out, and the music, and the dialogue like all, all the concerns that people have like i feel it and i'm super back and forth you know I, I'm, I'm not saying i hate the show but i'm certainly not saying i love what i'm seeing um justin butler said watching this trailer has it changed your thoughts or feelings of what's to come to be honest no no it's too late now i'm mm. i'm not gonna say the phrase that always gets thrown around now but i'm going in there with really see no i don't have high, high hopes for the show no i don't really think in my heart it's going to be the greatest show ever made but i think i will enjoy it for what it is mm. and that's kind of a big thing is i don't expect it and we know it won't be word for word um accurate to what tolkien wrote they are going to change things hopefully those things aren't too jarring and they don't destroy the whole feel of the world obviously in a trailer some things seem a lot more jarring than they may when they are introduced in the show in the right context but I just don't know. I'm mm. kind of, I'm really hoping I do enjoy it, but I feel like I'm going to be picking it apart a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are so many, like, on the head comments coming in here. Mm. Um, yeah, there's a comment here from Clint saying it's really sad. All we're seeing is made up characters and not canon characters. Yes, I know. We are, we are seeing some canon characters in these trailers, but I get what you're saying. They are putting the. The stories of this part aren't necessarily canon. Yeah, um, which I understand, because if the focus is purely on Isildur and Elendil and Gilgalad, then they are very limited with what they can do. Whereas mm. if they put them into the background and have them go about their linear story and put these new characters in, mm. into the focus, then they kind of have far more freedom with their storytelling. So I understand that from a writer's perspective, but obviously as fans of Middle-earth, that's not what we want. We want to see the stories mm. that we know happen expanded on. Because let's be honest, there's very little detail about the second age. So yeah. when the show was announced and it was like, it's in the second age, it's like, oh, amazing. We're going to yeah. get to see the epic you know, storylines of the founding of Gondor and mm. the creation of the rings and the just corruption Numenor of the Numenorians. And just, and, yeah, but it feels like we're just, that's happening in the background and yeah. some stories of some less important characters are taking the limelight. That's one of the things that I'm most disappointed about. And mm. while we're on that topic, I feel like I can kind of say that the music thing fits in with this. 
with the music, it feels like they very much hit the song that went, oh, this is really cool, this is really epic. It would make good trailer music. Let's put it on the trailer. Mm. They're right. It was really cool trailer music. But it's not Middle Earth, right? Yeah. And I think that's the same for the show as a whole. It looks like it could be a good show, mm. right? But I don't have any issues with the costumes or the casting, um, the cinematography. I think it all looks fine. But it's just, it doesn't have the Middle yeah. Earthness. And everything that's coming out is getting more and more that way, yeah. in my opinion. And it's what's even more frustrating about the music, though, is only a few days ago they released the uh, the soundtrack mm. to the series, and I can't remember the number of tracks, but a lot of them. And so many of them sounded so good and yeah. so right for mm. the world. What is with this jarring left turn to put on? <laughs> like They've just shown that they've got this catalogue of music that fits mm. well and is epic, but they don't use any of it. They yeah. go and do what they just did. And uh, why? Yeah. No, um, Dom said, I'm just going to pretend this trailer never happened. Smoke some pipe weed and wait for the first episode. I think, like, yeah, that's that's a good way of looking at it. I mean, don't don't let a trailer ruin everything for you. At the end of the day, you shouldn't make full judgments on things. Don't judge a book by its cover, right? We should all, in my opinion, we should all watch the show. If we hate it, then we rip into it. Yes. It's all well and good ripping into a trailer, but that shouldn't reflect mm. exactly how the show performs, right? I know. Think of how many films you've gone and seen that, that you've seen the trailer, like, oh, this is going to be the best film mm. ever. It's going to be incredible. You watch and you're like, yeah. Uh. Um, John, John put a minute ago, how about the chain stunt by the Numenorians taking down the orcs? I honestly chuckled. Oh, uh, yeah. that, that, like that. no, that's the classic like choreography of, okay, one at a time now, line up, you come, hit you out of the way, next one comes down, do that, and the ones in the back are all just going, yeah, wait my turn. Mm. Wait my turn. Now it's my turn to die. It's just like, they're just, Looks like they just stood there waiting to be yeah. clotheslined, basically. All, all things like that. I mean, even if we go back to the Peter Jackson movies, you have the, the big set-piece stunts, like Legolas has one in each movie, right? There's the mm. taking down the troll, then there's the shield down the steps in Helm's Deep, and then there's the taking down of the Moomakel. They're all a bit silly, mm. right? But it's, it's cinema, it's Hollywood. Yes. Those things kind of, they don't have to go in there by any means, but they just do. They they, they do go in the movies. Mm. And, and, and Amazon are not going to stray away from that. They're going to have these big moments where yeah. they try and fit in things that they think, that'll be really cool. The audiences but, will like that. I know. But the frustrating part with that as well is, though, is when you think about it, is they've had the example of the ones that hit in The Lord of the Rings yeah. and then the ones that didn't in The Hobbit. Yeah. Because, like, Legolas gravity defying up the stones Oof. moment. Ooh, ooh, like, no. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a very clear and like, well-publicised audience reaction that that was a mistake. Yeah. So you'd hope Amazon would look at that and go, okay, these smaller mm. but still more fantasy-type events or um, actions happen, and they kind of worked. Now, <laughs> gravity-defying stuff, not so much. Y you would hope that they would look at that and learn a lesson. Yeah. But will Amazon learn a lesson? I mean, I feel like looking at the trailer and what we've seen so far, they definitely have learned some lessons from the failure that was the Hobbit trilogy. I mean, CGI orcs, for example. Mm. Um, it looks like all the orcs in this production are practical. Yes. That's a big tick for me. Yeah. Big tick. And I think the orcs look good. Um, I haven't really heard too many negative feedback about the look of the orcs. I think, obviously, they look very, very similar to mm. Peter Jackson's, but also there are some differences. So they're mm. kind of like uniquely familiar, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Um, but yeah, there's other aspects, of course, like James was saying, with these stunts that just, just don't work. Yeah. And you'd think they would have learned by now. Okay, let's get into some comments. Priscilla TV, we should take a deep breath and go watch a show. Then we can sit down and have a conclusion about what they did right and what they did not. I 100% agree with you. I yeah. absolutely am on the same page as you with that. Um, and I think that'll be one of the benefit of getting the first two episodes together. Yeah. Because quite often the very first episode is so much world building mm. that... You can sometimes come away from those episodes and kind of be like, uh, don't really feel anything about the show yet, but I kind of understand what's going on. So the fact we get both and together, I think they're about two and a half hours, two and a quarter hours. Mm -hmm. That well, that's a movie. Like that's yeah, enough time. That movie. That's enough time. I feel for us to judge in what direction the show will go, whether it's good, bad, close to something that people can respect, or something that people are going to go, okay, this is just fan fiction. Um, yeah, and we'll just kind of have to see. But I feel like it is a good idea that they're both coming out at the same time. Yeah. Um, Justin Butler says, I'm assuming you've seen the recent news about the Embracer group. Hopefully, mm -hmm. it, if Rings of Power goes the way a lot of people think it will, it may be a lesson learned for Embracer. 
yeah, we recently, well, we put out a news video regarding mm -hmm. that announcement um, when it happened. But yeah, I mean, it does I mean, give yeah, an be, opportunity oh, to learn. So it'd be good to talk about that a bit more in a little bit once we've um, covered the trailer. So Yeah, but let, let, let's stick a little bit more yeah. to specifics of the trailer. So if anybody has questions about specifics, we will discuss. But the next thing I want to talk about is the, the Meteor Stranger. I guess still Meteor it. Man! Yeah. Um, yes. I mean, it's th this trailer more so than any others made it seem very, very, very clear that he is a wizard of some sort. I don't know. It could almost be a Jedi at this point. <laughs> uh, he's robed. He's got long grey hair, long grey beard. There was a shot, I believe, where it looked like he was using some kind of magic, like shouting or something. Yeah, and... it was. It was that <laughs> generic, angry scream, force field type energy goes out. Mm. That's how it appeared. Um, my biggest concern with oh, this... Oh, sorry. Someone, I've just seen a comment saying, are we live on a potato? Is our signal that bad? I mean... I hope it's not too bad. Um, if you're new to our live streams, and a big reason why we haven't done as many is the internet where we are based is awful. So quite often we do get issues with them. I apologise, but I'm hoping you can at least hear us. Yeah, it's annoying because what we're streaming on here looks crystal clear. Mm. Um, but hopefully so, yeah. it's okay. Let us know if you can't hear us properly. If you can't see us, I guess... Uh, Look at you. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much. But anyway, sorry, back to um, Meteor Man, Jedi, Paul Shooter, yeah. Skywalker. There's people here saying about... Um... Okay, it was pretty bad, but it sounds great. Okay, as long as you can hear us, that's yeah. all that matters. Can't see your lovely faces. Lucky you. Mm. What, right, Meteor Man, yes. yes. Gandalf. I mean, I, I really, really hope it's not Gandalf. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to say, like, right now, I would place money that it's not Gandalf, personally. I am basically convinced in my own mind, and this may be completely wrong, that it's one of the blue wizards. Because we don't know much about anything they do. All we know is that they end up going east. Um, I get that, but surely they would have some blue in their robes. Ah, but he's just crashed. Yeah. I mean, when Gandalf first came back as the white, he was naked. So... I guess. He's got to, they've got to get the clothes from somewhere, and yeah. they have just landed... And if any race of people are likely to give them like a bluey, more colourful type robe than just a plain white or grey, yeah, might be these Harfoots. I mean, that's really clutching at nothing, but I don't know. But to me, I feel like it's one of the blue wizards. He is one of the blue wizards. But then I'm also confused why, he, if it is, he'd be on his own. Mm. So, because if I'm correct, in the last official um, version that Tolkien kind of stuck with was that they arrived at the same time as Glorfindel in the Second Age, mm. which is why I believe it would be one of them. But again, I feel like well, it definitely does not arrive in a meteor. Yeah, I just don't, I don't get it. And I also definitely don't think it's Sauron. No. A lot of people were thinking that, and I think some people still are, but I, I would still say it's not. I feel like that's too obvious, and it would be way too much bad storytelling to do that in that way straight away mm. but maybe we can't put that past them yeah i just don't know i mean there's obviously some debate about the timeline of the astari arriving anyway mm. um yeah it depends which one they're counting as the one they're using or if they're going oh because there's multiple answers we'll just make a bar room what i'm hoping is that they don't introduce a new wizard oh they can't that that would bug me they can't. That would really bug me. Yeah. Um, I, but, I'm, not, I'm not sure I even want to say this out loud. But you know what kind of colours they'd pick if there's a new one, don't you? Mm, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I can't see them doing that. I think that's too much of a big alteration to the story. That I think that would just get vetoed and they would go, no, 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 no. Gandalf you, the pink. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I... Yeah. Maybe we rise if that happens. Yeah. I, I, I also hope it doesn't end up being a wizard that they build up as completely someone else. And then, like, the last scene of the last episode, a half it turns to him and is like, Gandalf. You look like a Gandalf. I really hope not. Oh, anyway. Caleb says, nice shirt. Us. Are you talking to me or James? Uh, you're Polaris, so. Polaris? Okay. Yeah. We we make all the Polaris video content if you don't. Yes. No. Yeah, any <laughs> of the behind the scene behind the scenes stuff, that's it. Mm. Same for Tatami as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Peter the Pink. 
Yeah, exactly. That's that's what we're we're on about. Um, oh no, they've found our short film idea. <laughs> Joking. If they call him Gandalf, I'm a rage. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I get it. I don't think there's a single Tolkien channel who won't rage if they mm. start doing that. And they can't be that stupid, can they? No. I mean, we can clip that for like later in the, <laughs> in the year when we're like, yeah, they could. So, someone said, I think him looking like Gandalf is a pretty good indication it won't be him. But, I mean, yeah, that's that's a, a good good shout. Mm. Um, Clive the Crim- Crimson Red, love it. Um, yes. Someone's Priscilla TV has asked, "Are you into jujitsu?" Uh, yeah, I mean, if you don't know, we actually own a jujitsu gym. That's where we are right now. Our office is inside a uh, a big gym. Mm. Are there so any positives at at all from Samaras? Are there any positives um, at all? Just from this trailer. I don't feel like there's any new positives. No. Um, there's the positives I already had, uh, kind of like I mentioned about Khazad Doom and the dwarves mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I'm quite interested about Alrond and how they're going to go about his character. Um, I really like the actor, and I've seen a lot of stuff about how he has really become like a talking fanatic since he got the role and stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the best news you can get for these kind of things, is you always find the best from like the Lord of the Rings and stuff. The people who gave the best performances were the ones who were more obsessed with the material. Christopher Lee. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like um, that will be a very interesting thing to see. Matt, what's up, dude? Yo. But yeah, it's... Uh, I'm trying to think now if there's anything else specifically that... Like, the cinematography I'm on board with. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm not on board with the action set pieces we've seen so far. Mm. They, I, I almost feel like they're tryhards, you know? Just make yeah. it... Make, I know it's fantasy. I, I don't want to say make it real, but... Well, that's one of the things... Ground it in reality, yeah, you know? That's one of the things that made Lord of the Rings so good, one for a better mm. word, um, was that they did almost try and make it more... I don't want to say documentary style, but more like it did exist. Everything was real. Mm. And it just helped you... Um, what's the word? Um, like, be in the world... I might Im- like, immerse yourself. Yeah, it made it made it so much easier for any of the audience to immerse themselves in the world without any effort. Whereas this is feeling a bit more like you got to learn the rules to the world. Yeah, which is not always a good thing. No, I agree. Exactly. Um, <laughs> yes, is another trailer. Definitely check it out. Um, Range of the North said your opinion about Elvis Lagatha, aka Galadriel. They 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 they've clearly seen the worries i think we know that galadriel is this powerful majestic mystic beautiful being and they've just made her a badass warrior in this Mm -hmm. i think the last two trailers have made it clear that they're trying to make it a transitional period where she's going from being a warrior Mm -hmm. to what we know her as um yeah I'm not saying that's right, I'm not saying it's wrong, but I think that's what they're they're aiming for. Yeah, I mean, from this trailer, they basically did give away the fact that she's gone, oh, my brother Finmod was the one fighting the bad guys. Mm. He's dead, so I'm going to take up that mission now and I'm going to fight the bad guys. That's a very generic way of saying it. Yeah. Um, So whether it's she does a bit and then she kind of goes, actually, no, I'm not that frontline warrior and stands back, and they might have a bit of character development like that, I don't really know. Or they're going to have her on the front line for every battle because reasons yeah um comment here from deepak mauer a bit worrying it is the comment section for the trailer is already full of memes i don't think the show will get a proper chance it might just be hated because of the first impressions that's one of my biggest worries about the entire thing is well just that it will not be given a chance yeah that's this is what we've been like we have been slated over the last few months for being sellouts and shills for not trying to tear this show down this is not the case at all. Uh, that We've not been paid any money, of course. Um, but we just want people to give it a chance. At the end of the day, it's a Lord of the Rings product, or Middle Earth product, a Tolkien product. So it would be a shame for people to go, no, nope, looks rubbish, and, and not give it a chance. It could, it could end mm. up being amazing. And that's all we've been saying all along. Yeah. We want it to be amazing. Mm. Um, but I, I also, do think you're right. Yeah, I also understand that some people... Don't want it to be good because it's Amazon. Mm. But at the end of the day, if this show does well, it could breathe new life into so many great projects in the future. 
Yeah. It doesn't even have to be the best show ever, this one. It just has to be... It has to make money at the end of the day. Yeah, it just, but it just has to introduce a whole new um, age of people into yeah. Tolkien. If it does that, like the Peter Jackson films did for us, mm-hmm. like we may well be here, but we might not necessarily be here without those films. So if this show is that for a whole new age of people, then that is a good thing. Even if it's not the TV series that gets linked with Tolkien's name the most in the future. Mm. It might just be a stepping stone to something greater. That's kind of yeah, I agree. The hope if it doesn't tick all the boxes. I agree. Um, for Frodo says hello guys, big fan. Thank you very much. Um, I don't understand the music choice for the trailer. Very disconnected. What do you guys think? Yeah, that uh, it's kind of the first thing we started with when we went live today. The music, cool song, not not for this universe at all. Very very disappointing. Literally, as soon we watched it together, and as soon as it started, I just looked at James and was like, <laughs> "What have they done? What is this music?" So yeah. Um, sorry awkward silence as well we read some comments yeah the music was likely to pull in a wider audience the kind of Mm. audience that isn't interested in fantasy I get it makes sense Amazon needs everyone to watch this I do understand and I feel like part of me kind of starts to think that perhaps they're being accepting of the fact that they have turned off all the Tolkien fans right all the Mm. purists for lack of a better word people that want it to be essentially a documentary on Middle Earth rather than an adaption, they've given up on those because mm. there's so much hate coming from that side of the audience. So they've just gone, okay, let's just pull in the generic fans instead. And I think you are right. It, it is to bring in that wider mm. audience base. Business-wise, it might be yeah. the better, better route, and, let's be honest. And it is the thing that we do still remember at the end of the day. It's, it's all about making money. As much as us as fans would love to do it, the only people who can make these things are people who want to make a return on it. So... There's always going to be that blurred line of mm. let's make something great and let's make something that's going to make the most money. Yeah. It's like we can go back to Star Wars. When the prequels came out, there was obviously at the time a lot of hate towards the prequels, but it was very clear a lot of the decisions were purely based on merchandise and getting kids to buy toys. Mm. Right. So there is, like you were just saying, always that line between making something good and making money. Mm. And I think that's what's going on here. Who will dominate ratings? House of the Dragon or the Rings of Power? Well. I haven't seen the first episode of um, House of the Dragon, nor have I seen the last six seasons of Game of Thrones. Or <laughs> five seasons, whatever. Um, so right. it's hard to say. I mean, I finished Game of Thrones through that season eight stuff. Uh, but I haven't watched the House of Dragon first episode yet. I am more likely to give it a few weeks and watch more back to back than do it week by week. I think uh, more because of family situations and watching it time. Um, but I have heard such good things about that first episode, and that they've their marketing has been spot on. The production has been what it needs to be for that kind of show, and really they've just done everything that Amazon has done wrong. Mm. So. When it comes to actual ratings, I feel like House of the Dragon is going to do better because the fan base is more on site. Like we kind of touched upon is that even if the first episodes come out and they're great, there's going to be so much hatred that it's going to bring ratings down anyway, even if it is great. So I feel like no matter what, at least early part of season one, House of the Dragon is going to yeah, probably. be above. But I'm hoping The Rings of Power can show that it is actually a good show. And overtake. Yeah. Uh, Ryan says, I guess I'm in the minority that actually enjoy these trailers and I'm very excited to see what they come up with. No, we, like, we're not saying we hate them. We just are not on board with some of the decisions. Um, we are still excited for the show, for sure. We are looking forward to to watching them and... Oh. Oh, a light just died. What on earth? Okay, carry on. I will change the battery now. It, it is, it's fine. The, you. the signal sucks anyway. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Once the first two episodes have aired, we are very much looking forward to coming on here, whether it's a watch party, which is like 2am for us, um, <laughs> or whether it's the next day when we live stream and discuss with you guys. We are super excited to do that. I- I'm hoping, it, it, we, as a community, we're all going to get together, the bro here, in, and we're all going to be happy and be, you know, relieved, I guess. Mm. Apologies, I've lost the battery, so... We're slightly darker now. Um, 
yeah, but that's actually, well, let's bring it up now. What would you guys like to see us do? Would you like to see watch parties at the exact time it goes live? Would you like to see live streams like this the day after? Yeah, what would I, you I would, to see? I don't think we'd be able to do both in terms of time. Yeah. Um, or, yeah, just kind of let us know. What would you prefer? Because obviously watch parties, we can't physically watch it at the same time because of copyright reasons. Um, but, we, but we can kind of talk as things are going. Or would everyone rather seen the entire thing, taken it in, and then come back for discussion later? Mm -hmm. Someone just put Broherim Defug. <laughs> so clearly you must be oh. <laughs> fairly new to this channel. It's an old uh, kind of nickname for our audience um, from back in the day. Yeah, and to be honest, I think it's... My favourite thing that you guys have ever come up with is it was the, best. the name of the Bro Hiram. It was almost what the channel was called, to be fair, wasn't it? Yeah. So it was. It kind of went from the potential channel name to just what you guys are. Yeah, we've also got Insoxicated Fan. You guys don't have to be so doom and gloom. It's a trailer, lol. Um, I guess you've just tuned in. We've not been doom and gloom at all. No. We said we didn't like the music, but we said we are, you know, we really, 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 really want to like this show. Uh, where did I get? Range of the North. How is your fan films production going on? Yeah. Uh, we've got a meeting on Friday. In fact, moving ahead, yes. we've, we've actually today had some some photos sent of progress for some props and costume that's being made for us. Which we will upload to the Patreon. Yes, because, so if you want yeah. to be kept up to date, have a look at the Patreon. It looks so good. So yeah. good. Um, okay, a lot of people saying live streams the day after instead. Prefer the latter. would be great to discuss right. after the episode has come out and yeah. you guys have gathered your thoughts about it. We could potentially do both. Potentially, um, yeah. What, uh, Lady Fantastic, I have a uterus. Been binge watching all your old stuff. What are those two things connected? <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Thank I mean, you. I, I can't see. It. Can't see their lies, like either of them. But it's... <laughs> Yuri the bomb. Goodbye, history of the ages. Have a good day. We are oh. not history of the ages, but thanks for That's being around a since then. Blast from the past. <laughs> To me, this is a live stream minus five hours. Huh? To me, this one. Priscilla said, I'm poor at the moment, otherwise I would join Patreon. It's not a problem. With, you know, there's, there's no um, need to, <laughs> to join the Patreon. Your views, your comments, your interaction with us is uh, more than enough. Appreciate it. Nah, the bro hear him. Hmm? Mm, I don't know. John says, regardless of how September 2nd goes, those of you who are a fan of Middle Earth strategy battle games should keep an eye on the Tabletop Alliance. <laughs> Appreciate that. Oh, yes. Uh, another one saying, prefer after giving time for people to watch and let things sink in. Um. <laughs> Lady Fantastic. Uh, Lady Fantastic said, sorry, just <laughs> mentioning Ladies Love JRR as well and your content, but thanks for making it more awkward than it needs to be. <laughs> You're welcome. That's why we're here. Um, live stream because of overseas fans. Day after. Um, okay. Will you do weekly videos summarizing each episode? I think so. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely be doing breakdown ones as well. Yeah. Um, I'm actually unclear at this point because I know House of the Dragon are doing it where they always release a trailer for the next episode just mm. after the first episode is released. Mm -hmm. So whether there might be a breakdown of the episode with that next one as a separate one or something. But it's one of those. We want to we wanna cover the show without over covering the show. Yeah. Like all our law based content is still planning to be as is. We basically so, don't want the show to get in the way of the law. No. The Tolkien law, not the Amazon law. Yeah. You know? So Mondays, Thursdays, the plan is to still have a video on them every week. Nothing to do with the show. Maybe characters that are in the show might be covered in the the law mm -hmm. a bit, but So the, those people that say that we've sold out for the show, you're wrong. It's just additional content. Mm. And it's all about Middle Earth, so yeah. <laughs> what do you think about the strange Eminem cult person in Numenor? Good question. Very, very weird. Um, when, so, I mean, when everyone first thought that that was um, Sauron, Sauron yeah. that was... Uh... So, well, we said that in the first reaction to that, mm. but I want to clarify with that. We got sent early access to that trailer. Um, and when you get early access to a trailer, you mm. get to watch it like once. Yeah, and um, with a big watermark. and With the big, the broken sword watermark on it. So yeah. you can barely see it. You see it once and... Uh, it was on a phone. So yeah. we had to try and remember everything and then break it down, ready to release the video for when the trailer came mm. out. So we said it could be Sauron and then see it on a big screen after we put out the video and we were like, that's definitely not Sauron. <laughs> <laughs> but never mind. Um, I think it's meant to be an Anatar misdirect. Uh, I don't even think it's meant to be I, that. It's, no, it's a I, I think it's part of what will become the cult of Malkor is just a follower worshipper of darkness. I, 
I don't think there's much more to it than that, really. It just looks like a interesting kind of figure to show in the trailer. If the show is good, will you do proxy miniatures of the characters? Um, we, we could probably do ones that fit in well within the show's universe, um, but we couldn't proxy the characters themselves because we'd probably get sued. Uh, yeah, uh, one from uh, Jark High saying, keep your eyes on Halbrand. Yeah, I've heard a few rumours about how Rand could be Sauron in some form and mm. it's all a big misdirection. Um, honestly, if that is right and they've introduced a new character as a, another form, mm. um, whether that's a knowing form or like a memory loss form, that like I, I just hope not. Yeah. It's basically with that. I just, I hope not. Um, and also, from one side, just while it's popped into my head, from when the trailers before... Or the, the little 30 second teasers they've been putting out, where you see Halbrand and Adrial talking, and it's almost like a bit of sexual tension in there. Mm. I hope that's some really bad editing, oh, and that's please, not the but, case. Because yeah. Galadriel and Celeborn are a thing, always have been a thing. There's no, there's no love stories there for Galadriel. Do not introduce that. Just because Celeborn is missing in action at this point, and we've got no idea where he is, um, yeah. does not mean they can change all that. I hope there's no, you know. Legolas, Keely, Feely, Tariel, love triangle thing going on here. Please, please, no. Mm. Um, wait, wait, I just saw a comment. I don't understand why elves have short hair. That's going to be a hard one for audiences to get over. I totally agree. That decision makes zero sense to me. It's not a hard thing to do to give your cast long hair when they're described as being beautiful long haired beings. But mm. whatever. It's not. I'm not going to let that ruin the show for me at all. It's a weird one. Yeah. I'd love to know the real genuine reason behind that yeah this kind of music was in the hobbit also yeah and the hobbit sucked <laughs> um but that sort of music wasn't in the hobbit but they no. like credit like they, they had ed sheeran yeah, do the song yeah, yeah. for um desolation of smell which to be honest outside of the films i quite like the song I'm not saying it fits though i thought people were joking but hearing rumors that Caliborn is killed off early in the show so galadriel can go full rage mode I don't think they can do that. They're not allowed to change what we know is canonical. Yeah. And we know that, that, that he's alive in the Third Age. So, mm. uh, Unless now, and again, I hope this isn't the way it goes, they do a, uh, a fake death situation mm. where you think he's dead, something so happens, and then he comes back later. Mm. I hope not. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of excited for Elrond and Durin's friendship, even though it's not low accurate. Yeah. It's it's a weird one. Saying, like, it's not low accurate, but it's also never said that they... That, I mean, the whole thing with Durin in general, um, the fact that there's two Durins alive at the same time still bugs the army. Um, that's literally not how the, the reincarnations of Durin work. So that's one of the law things I'm surprised they've even been able to do. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm really interested to see it. I don't think, and I mean, I could be corrected if I'm wrong here, I don't think there's a point to say that Auront has never been friendly with the dwarves in that way. Um, but yeah, I understand what you mean. It's not written that he is, but the thing with the show is if it's not written that it wasn't, mm. they can technically try and do it. Mm. Uh, we have a super chat from Martin. Hey. Hello, guys. Long time. How's it going, buddy? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hope this will be great, but I have my worries. Mm -hmm. Wheel of Time was not that great, even though I hoped it would be. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of how we, we feel. We have our worries, but we're mm -hmm. still we're looking forward to it. We're still mm -hmm. hoping it's going to be great. I didn't actually watch Wheel of Time. I never read the books, but yeah, I didn't hear great things. Yeah, I, yeah to be fair, the Wheel of Time world has not gripped my fancy at any point. Um, so, yeah, I don't really know enough about that show. All I know is it wasn't where I was. Now I know why I didn't subscribe to this channel. Um, be more specific. Why is that? Is that our faces? Is it because I mentioned about Alwand and dwarves? And... Who knows? Um, there's some people here that like Wheel of Time. Maybe yeah. I should give it a go. Again, I feel like that's probably one of those shows. In five to ten years, people will go back to it and think, okay, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. But it's that... It's going into these things with the mentality that it's not going to be... The words you read just on the screen. Mm. It's going to be altered in whichever way kind of works for the producers. And annoying, there's always going to be a, a grander theme that these shows want to talk about. Um, 
that's modern day cinema and TV. Hopefully, it's just not too overriding over the mm. enjoyment of being in Middle Earth. Yeah. Dominic says what were your favourite parts from the trailer. So, okay, let's be positive. Not that we've yes. been solely negative, but it's nice to, to also be no. positive. Um, we said earlier we do like the look of Casa Doom, and that's yep. the same for both of us. I'm very impressed with the design choices there. I like the contrast of colours. They've picked blue and oranges, which is pretty, mm. it's pretty generic these days, mm. but I like it. Um, I don't like the action. Oh, wait, I'm being positive. Um <laughs> Uh, oh dear. <laughs> um, I, I see a lot of people kicking off about the costumes. I don't have an issue with the costumes. I think they look okay. I think the, no, the yeah, I set designs thing, and stuff look cool. So I saw a thing that with um, it's with uh, Muriel where her you see she's wearing a uh, scale armor, which some people don't like, and to me, um, it's it's an interesting choice. I don't particularly have anything against it, but you could see underneath she's basically wearing like a tunic, and it's like folding in, but it's made to look like the scale armor. So people are thinking it's a really cheap attempt at doing armour but have it printed rather than make it mm. and I don't it might just be me trying to find a positive where there's not but to me it's not they weren't trying to make it look like it is actual armour mm. it was the clothing she wears is just the same as the armour it's more it's an obvious choice rather than a bad bit of costume I may be completely wrong on that and it may have been there to make it look like her armour was longer than it was but when it's very obviously something underneath it, to me that's just a it's a way to make it look the same without it actually being yeah. too heavy. Harvey Harrison, what's up, dude? Um, hi, guys, just saw it. I don't hate it, but weakest trailer yet. Yeah, I could agree with that. I feel like they needed to end this trailer with the Balrog. In a yeah, way. If you know especially what I mean, like, with the build-up of the music and then it just kind of died yeah, off. Yeah, but like that was just such a moment that made everyone kind of sit up and go, okay, that's the Jones Bane. Is it something else? And I feel like that's the last moment you wanted to see before going into the show. Like, something that really makes you go, ooh, okay, have they mm. woken up the Balrog already? Are we going to see all that? Um, what does it mean? Is it something else? Is he, are these flashbacks? Is it... What is it? So, yeah. yeah. Um, Matt Bryant put a really good comment here. Um, I'm a big Tolkien fan. I'm really looking forward to new content. Worst comes to worst, it's still new content, and it may be amazing. Can't wait to give it a chance. Yep, that's exactly mm. how everyone should feel. Um and we've said this a million times, if this is the worst show ever, people don't need to be so personally hurt by it. It doesn't affect what's already there. It doesn't yes. affect Tolkien's books. It doesn't affect Peter Jackson's no. Lord of the Rings trilogy. We still have those, and they can be kept in a separate place in my mind, and this is just a fan film. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it, but people seem to think it's insulting. It's not. It's different. Um, if it's great, fantastic. If it's not, we move on like we were before it came out. Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry. Um, blah, 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 blah. Um, Patrick uh, said it, it seemed like it was meant to be a hype trailer. Yeah, I kind of get what you mean. Um, but like we've kind of said, it's it just we feel like it missed the mark. Mm. Um, I think the mark then is where they dropped the ball. To be yes. honest, they had a strategy for Wheel of Time, but using the same strategy for Rings of Power was a mistake. I agree with that also. Um, and also, when just to before we get onto these super chats, before with the being positive thing, Numenor is another one that I'm really positive about. Mm -hmm. I love what they've shown of it so far. The sets all look incredible. I love that you can see bits of Minas Tirith and Gondor in the design um, and the ships and stuff. It all looks incredible. Like I feel yeah. like they've nailed what Numenor should be in mm -hmm. the look, um, and hopefully it carries on through everything we see. It's weird, but we don't... It may also... It sounds ridiculous now. This is just spitballing. They may also be underselling it with the marketing so that everyone kicks off, brings it to everyone's attention, and mm. the whole world is like, this show sucks. Oh, yeah. And when it comes out, it's a massive thing that it's... Oh, yeah. it's actually well, amazing. Like you, know, like, you don't know. Like they say, no publicity is bad publicity. Yeah. The fact that everyone talks about it so much, every time a trailer comes out, it trends the fact that there's something wrong, something missing, or someone's butthurt about something that they've shown mm. all for them that's going oh that's another few thousand eyes that's another few thousand eyes that's another few thousand eyes yeah all these people are going to look at it and go okay so how bad is so and so so and so in the show but they watch it mm -hmm. okay we have two super chats let's get to those first one victor s thank you very much for the super chat really appreciate that thoughts on the theatrical release on august 31st um it's i mean okay well theatrical releases 
is the advanced screening. So they, they can't sell tickets because they don't have the rights for theatrical releases as such. Mm -hmm. But they can give away as many tickets as they want. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of, I like that idea in a way. Because if this show is going to be as big and as grand as it's supposed to be, most people won't appreciate it all watching it on a TV in their living room. Yeah. Um, so I think getting the chance to see it on a big screen with like proper production speakers, everything like that, I think is a great opportunity. Um, it'll almost suck that they you won't be able to see the whole series in that way if you're going to. Um, and I don't really have anything bad to say about it. I guess it's just another hype thing, but I I don't see that being a problem. They're giving away free tickets for people to go watch their stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um. I don't really have anything to add to that, sorry. Uh, but Victor, thank you so much for the comment. Hopefully we can see an advanced screening. Uh, Martin, another super chat. Thank you so much. Um, Wheel of Time world, world building from novels is pretty good. Great magic system. Uh, prose not nearly as good as Tolkien's. Show butchered it in many ways. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I have heard that. I think it was um, Alex yeah. told us before. Because neither of us have read the, the Wheel of Time books. Mm. Not seen the show. But I have heard that they introduced a really cool magic system. Uh, and it does sound like something mm. I'd enjoy. Um, but yeah, if they, if it was such good source material and they butchered the show, just from what I've heard from other people, again, mm. this is not my opinion, then, it, yeah, I can, I can understand why people are worried about this show because of that. Mm. Again, thank you so much for your super chats. I just saw a comment there. Where's it gone? <laughs> Harvey said, also watching this show while working on the project, Winface. We like what we've seen. Oh, yeah. Can't wait to share. I, I just want to like show everyone stuff. Yeah, I know. But, you know. We're talking about for our fan for the, film. Yeah, for the short film project. Which, for those of you who don't know, I'll just clarify now. Our Patreon money, um, none of that money goes in our pockets. None of that is for us at all. That is just there so that we can make a short film project um, inspired by Middle Earth. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what it goes to. So, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, so if you want to help hmm. see... Um, I guess what we could do. Yeah. Um, then yeah, that's how you can support or, that project. Or if you have any skills that might help involved with any kind of filmmaking stuff, let us know as well. We're more than. I mean, it'd be even greater if the fans can get involved more. Yeah. Um, but remember, we are based in the UK in Wales, so it's harder for Americans. Yeah. But uh, like Harvey just said, he is helping us out with some props and costumes. You can check. Uh, drop your Instagram in the comments, dude. Um, you should all check it out. Some really really cool stuff. Mm. Uh, okay. We just missed a load of comments. Someone asked, how, how many seasons do they have a green light for? I believe it's five. Five seasons. Yeah. Um. Well, that's a good question. Because Morgoth is mentioned by Legolas in the Lord of the Rings books, how much can they depict of the first Dark Lord? I don't think they've ever clarified exactly. And then, to be honest, I feel like the rights thing is still a bit of a mystery. It's like... They've got the rights to the appendices and stuff, but then suppose they've been able to go and ask specifics, like if they want this one bit from, say, the Silmarillion that they don't have the whole book, they can go and ask for it and then they might be granted it. So I don't think anyone really knows, apart from the showrunners themselves, exactly what they can say and what they can't. I mean, there was the hint in the one trailer that you could see um, the shadow of Morgoth over the two trees. So potentially he's hinting at a flashback or some kind of hint, I guess, of just... Um, the destruction of them with Angolian. But whether we see it or if it's like a shadowy figure and the light dying, it might just be like. Mm. So, to be honest, the answer is just I don't have a clue. <laughs> Good one. Um, Matt, well says, Matt says, let me know when there is filming and I'll fly down to be an extra. Yeah, that's another thing. When we finally do get to uh, actual production, then we'll probably put something out on social media. Anybody that wants to come and be an extra, you're more than welcome to come and be involved. We we don't have a date yet, but we'll be filming within the next 12 months. That's the goal, at least. Yes. Um, John, I'm also working on a separate project whilst watching this. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to hear it. We could really do with those, actually. Um, missed your live streams. Have to go now. We'll view later. Bye. Oh, well, thanks for tuning in, Aurora. Yes. Catch you later. I mean, the show's coming out ne next week. Yeah, we next week now. Um, so there'll be many more over the next few weeks. Do we think that we will see the forging of the rings during the first season? No. Yeah, probably not. I think that's too soon. Um, 
I, I don't think it'll be like the last season. I think it'll no. be part of the over mm. the overall story of the the five seasons. Well, I don't think we will truly see Anatar in the first season. No, I think we'll get that big hint of him at the end. Of the yeah, it'll, it'll probably so, be a reveal or a twist. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that means that maybe, maybe season two, possibly I, season three. I think what will happen is a character that we are familiar with throughout the first season that we spend a lot of time with will be revealed at the end of the season to be either a man of great power that is given a ring by Anatar, by Sauron, mm -hmm. and turns out to be maybe the Witch King or one Witch, of the Nazgul. Potentially that. Hal Ad Adar. Ad Ad Adar. Ad Ad yeah. yeah, potentially. I could be forgotten. If yeah. I can see the word. I can't think how you say it. Any of the men, potentially, <laughs> yeah. though. It could be. Um, I think that will likely be a twist. And then that person will probably be the main antagonist for the coming seasons before mm. eventually Anatar reveals himself himself as Sauron and becomes the, mm. the finale villain, I guess. Which which I'm assuming season five, and I'm hoping season five as a whole, will basically be the last alliance, the battle of the last alliance. I hope so. Um, because that cannot be done in one episode. No. Oh, oh, that'd be so good. Yeah. Oh. So long as it's not too generic action. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Priscilla's got to go. Thank you for the stream. Amazing as always. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, hopefully mm -hmm. we'll talk to you again soon. Uh, what time are we on? Oh, we're almost up to an hour. We'll, we'll, we'll mm -hmm. call it a day at an hour. We're on just under 52 minutes. So another eight minutes of, of questions, guys, and we will jump out and see you with the first episode, I guess. Do we want to carry on talking about the trailer or shall we go into some other um, stuff? Just check if there's any last comments just to answer first. Will there be a side plot with Helm Hammerhand? No. No, because there is the War of the Rohirrim movie that's due out in 2024, mm. I think. Um, Plus, I'm pretty sure that happens in the Third Age. Well, yeah, and that, but yeah. But yeah, so yeah, I think that's kind of... Um, and what are the people walking around with antlers? Not a clue. <laughs> it's it for, considering it was one of the first thing, images they released. Yeah. It feels very irrelevant. Yeah. So I'm not. I to be honest, I kind of even forgot about them. That's how mm. irrelevant they've become. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Sorry, that's probably not the answer you wanted. Mister D Mister Diddles <laughs> says, "Do you think the Tolkien estate will ever give the rights to make stuff on the Silmarillion? In my opinion, that's what hurt this show so much is the lack of detail and." Able to that info. Uh, I, I agree with that to a point. Um, I'd like to think they would give up the rights to Silmarillion because there's so much good content in that book, mm. right? There's, uh, it's not just one story. It's many, many, many stories. Yes. Some of which are the most important stories in the history of Middle Earth. So, I would, I would hope that they would at some point give up the rights, at least partly. I don't I know, but we'll see. They will. If I remember seeing right. I think it's about 20-ish years they become free domain. Mm, yeah. So this is why there's all these things about these big deals now. It's that these are kind of like the last... One of the last chances for them to cash in. Yeah. And it's horrendous, but it's uh, money talks. Yeah. Um, do we think it's Gandalf in the trailer? Yeah. I certainly hope not. Um, probably not. Hopefully not. Is Sauron expected to show up as Anatar in season two? Oh, sorry, if he's expected to show up in season two. What will the first season show and how will that be interesting enough to hook us for season two? I think he'll be like... Well, this is how it is in The Lord of the Rings, right? He's not a prominent villain, but he is the main villain. We don't really see him apart from in a prologue. Um, so it's probably the threat of Sauron that is the intimidating antagonist in this show and it'll be his general's that are the physical mm. villains, I would assume. Yeah. Either that or, like I said earlier, some kind of potential will be Nazgul. <laughs> um, um, so, Matt, does that mean in 20 years you guys can do what you like without getting sued? Um, yeah, I mean, the classic one that's just happened recently was um, Winnie the Pooh. Mm. Which, There's if, a if Pooh you guys, horror movie. Yeah, if you guys don't know, it may seem random as hell. But yeah, that's become free domain. And yeah, someone's making a Pooh horror movie. And if you see images, it looks... Terrifying. Yeah. But yeah, so technically, yeah, it, it becomes... 
Well, that's if I guess. I don't even know how it works. I don't know if someone else can come in and buy the rights for a long time. I'm not sure. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know the laws of that. So. Mr. Diddles, again, says, I will say Gil Galad is really one of the few characters I'm excited for, looks mm. great, and feels like a high king. I agree, yes. he looks fantastic, and oddly enough, he actually looks pretty similar to the yeah. to the role that was cast for him in the prologue of the Peter Jackson trilogy, which is mm. uh, pretty cool, in my opinion. Yes, and that's actually one of the things. I feel the Peter Jackson trilogy, although I understand the reasonings behind it, I'm so disappointed we never saw was uh, Elendil and Gil Galad actually fighting with Sauron and yeah. bringing him down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do we think of the writing slash dialogue found in the trailer? Anything that stood out to us? Um, I mean, nothing stood out off the top of my head now. I mean, it's been over an hour since we watched it, but yeah. And to me, it's just it's generic trailer. Yeah. Like I'm not. I'm trying to ignore it, but I'm trying to not take anything to on the nose of anything that was said because there's no context to. Yeah, it's just it. part of a scene, right? And they probably yeah. pick the more dramatic lines from said scenes. Yes, like what's Galadriel's line? Like, I am a tempest? Or what she's trying to like... Mm, like, And it's just like, that's just a bit... Because Elrond says, like, when are you going to put down the sword? And she yeah. says something like, well, what am I without it? Yeah. Um, it seems a bit like... I don't have an issue with it, but again, that's probably part of a big emotional scene. Mm. Like yeah. a, a where she has a lot of inner turmoil and... and she, you know, she's really unsure about her future. So I imagine in the context of the show, it's going to work well. It's mm. just hard to judge the trailer. Another super chat from Martin, my hero. Do you think Rings of Power needed to be rings specifically, or could that power have been imbued into any kind of worn object? Crown, necklace, bracelet. Question goes for all 20. Uh, That's an interesting uh, question. At the beginning, I thought you were on about just the name of the show. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't think it has to be rings. No, but I think it's a ring is something easy to gift someone mm. that's always worn. Yes. Whereas like a, a crown, a necklace, a bracelet, that might be an accessory to something, but people will often permanently wear a ring. Mm. So I think that's why that makes sense um, yeah. over the other item. But interesting question, for sure. Mm. Uh, also, I think um, Lord of the Necklaces by J.R.R. Tolkien doesn't have the same ring to it. <laughs> ring, kind of. Um, context matters absolutely mm. oh, that's okay <laughs> for Mr Diddles I'm pretty sure if you're a super casual fan and have no knowledge of the books these trailers are still confusing yeah <laughs> that's the camp my brother is in anyway and that's actually something I would be curious about and probably less likely with everyone here right now is if you're watching us you probably have a wider interest in the world kind of but um, yeah it's kind of a yeah, it would just be it would be interesting to know what people who know nothing about the show or about mm. the world really take away. Like, do they have any clue what's going on? Or at the same time, when you watch trailers about worlds that you don't know about, do you really understand everything from a trailer? Mm. No, you don't. There's so many shows that you watch a trailer and then when you watch the show, you almost go, oh, okay, this is quite different from what I was expecting or anything like that. It's not, it's not as clear cut. So... Yeah, it's... I just don't know. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, Range of the North, I agree with that. Elendil, Gilgalad and Durin all look badass, and I think it's how Tolkien would have imagined them. Um, no, I agree. I think they're definitely the better parts of the trailer, same mm. as Khazad-dûm and Numenor. I think they look... Mm. They all look good, and they all look sort of how I would depict them, you know, from, from my imagination when reading. Mm. Um... I guess the Meteor Man is Gandalf and they will connect it to Narya. What do you think? Uh, I think that they must be aware that people will riot if they have mm. Gandalf in the show. But another part of me thinks that the top guys in Amazon are going to insist on having a character that generic audiences, audiences are super familiar with. It's like, the Harfords. Yeah, um, but also Gandalf. Mm. If you've got some kid that saw Lord of the Rings once... Gandalf is a character you remember. Ga mm. Gandalf is the, the wizard, you know? He's the generic wizard in fantasy. Everyone knows who Gandalf is. So by including him, you give a, the widest audience possible a familiarity with the show. Mm. Uh, so I, would, I could see them doing it, but I really, 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 really hope they don't. I think that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Where is Khazad-dûm in the trailer? I don't see it. Um, it's the dwarven-looking place. 
Yeah. Is he anywhere where there's dwarves? That's. I don't think they showed them outside of Kazadoom at all in the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, as we've hit an hour, let's just have a quick five minutes to yeah. talk about Embracer Group. Mm -hmm. As okay. we said, we would touch upon it at the end now. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, Embracer Group are a Swedish gaming company who've basically bought the rights to the, uh, I guess, the film worlds that have been created. Mm -hmm. And this could mean many things going forwards, like new movies, new games, I think theme park rights they have, um, and a few other things like that. Uh, stage plays, that's the other one. Mm. Um, so it could mean, and this seems to be a worry now, is that they're going to disney everything and that we're going to get God knows how many shows, God knows how many films, God knows how many games, and so-and-so, so-and-so, and it's just going to become too much. Yeah. But, like, so from your opinion then, how would you find the world of Marvel and Star Wars now that Disney have them? Do you think they've done a good job? Do you think they've done a bad job? Do you think there's too much? Or not enough? I think they've done good and bad. And I mm. think that's the problem with pumping out so much is not everything can be kept to the same standard. Mm. Um, I'm in the camp of... I'm okay with there being a lot of content because I can kind of pick and choose. Mm. And it's not the same team working on everything. Mm. So it's not like they're spreading themselves too thin. They have lots of production companies and whatnot working on all these things. Um, I think I would rather five shows... In a, in a year, mm. two of them be amazing and the other three be poor to average than have one amazing show every three years, if that makes sense. Because I'm, mm. I'm, I'm a whore for content. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite funny because I'm the opposite. Really? I'd rather one great thing every couple of years um, than an overload. Cause... Well, like Mandalorian and Kenobi, I loved. Mm. Um, Book of Boba Fett was awful. Mm. But I think both Mando and Kenobi could have both been bigger and better. Mm. But I'm glad that we got them both. And I'm glad that I didn't have to wait years for them. <laughs> so you wouldn't have preferred they gave it an extra year on the production and made a better show? But that's the then... thing, it wouldn't have been a year, would it? It would have been multiple. Maybe, yeah. Um, by this point, I might have given up on Star Wars after some of the theatrical releases. So I don't know. So, I, I understand yeah. both points. Yeah. I hope they don't go too thin on Middle Earth content. No, it's one of those. If they start doing like, like you can picture it now, it's like Aragorn the early years and um, Gandalf through the ages and whatever they might do. Like, it is a weird one because I would love to see those stories, mm. but they're not written about in great detail. Mm. So there's some, like Aragorn, you could probably make a good series about what we know. Um, probably filling in a few gaps here and there, but it could make a decent show. Yeah. Whereas maybe someone like Gandalf, there's so many big periods of time that he's not really doing anything of particular note. Like, he's just wandering. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. Unsubscribe. Okay. Why? Juan. Why you, the what? great, we haven't been talking about Juan. The great beast of, are you on about the beast of, um, dog of Valinor? Or? I'm lost, sorry. Um, we missed something there, clearly. Um, M.E. said, I think WB, so Warner Brothers, still has the sub-license for film rights to Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit because of the Rohan animation might limit what they can do. Mm. Very good point. But the thing is, though, because they've only just got the rights, realistically, they'll start making stuff or pre-producing stuff mm. now. So you're probably not going to see them for three, four, five years anyway. Mm. Um, and yeah, then it'll kind of just go from there. Because, well, yeah. Yeah, like I said, with stuff already in the works, I don't know if they'd wait or if they have to wait. I don't, I don't really know enough detail on it, but I'm still very curious to see where it goes. I mean, if they give us Battle for Middle Earth 3, bring it on. Yes, I agree with that. Ecthelion of the Fountain says, what do you think of the War of the Rohirrim animation? Excited slash worried? Excited. I'm very excited. I mm. think um, Helm Hammerhand is an awesomely over-the-top and amazing character mm -hmm. that would be... You could definitely depict him in live action, for sure. But I think the over the topness of anime like just it just works for that character mm. the dude kills people with, with his bare fists with one punch yeah um, yeah and I, I think it's nice to have different types of content not everything has to be live action giving us some some mm. uh, animated stuff I think is great yep. someone said here a second ago I think it was Paul that a Clone Wars style Tolkien story would be great and I absolutely agree with that yes 
and, and all the first age stuff lends itself to anime mm. very well, I think. The dragons and all the kind of crazy beasts and stuff that are involved in that would be great. Yeah. Um, but I would be very curious to see if they would stick, obviously, the way they've got the rights, they would stick very closely to the aesthetics that have already been like shown from mm. Peter Jackson, or whether they would go and do a 180 and just try and be very unique in their own right. Mm. Who knows? I feel like both both ways has their positives and negatives. So. Yeah. Okay, let's bring this to a close. Um, I am sweating, I don't know about mm -hmm. you. Um, Tony says, we need to give the show a chance and after it we can discuss its good things and bad things. Yes. Yep, that's exactly what we're going to do. Yep. We're trying not to uh, be too negative and we're trying not to be too positive. We're just looking forward to it and that's what it is. Mm -hmm. um, Sunface Starters, happy to be here. Thank you, The Broken Sword. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, really appreciate it. Guys, the, the, I think we've pretty consistently stayed about 200, 250 people throughout this stream, so we appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for tuning in to listen to us ramble about a trailer and other yeah. Middle Earth type stuff. We appreciate it. Um, we absolutely love doing these live streams. Talking to you guys is what makes doing YouTube fun. Mm. Sitting behind a desk all day editing, it's, it's, it's lonely, right? Yeah. <laughs> so these live streams we do look forward to, but sadly we can't always fit them in. But thank you all so much for um, chatting in the comments and engaging with us. And a special thank you to those of you that put Super Chats in. Again, those go towards our short film. So we really, really appreciate that. Yeah. I think that's it. I feel like that is it. And just as we drop below 200 because people have started to leave. <laughs> so yes, thank you everyone for spending the last hour or so with us. Uh, if you miss some of it, go back and watch it from the beginning. Oh, oh thanks, John. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks, guys. Have a good week. You're all the best. See you soon. And the awkward ending stream moment. We need a cameraman. <laughs>